What is up YouTube, and today we have a tier list for the Customistic Banner, which will basically be a banner that is coming on the 25th of July, where you can choose the ML5 star and the ML4 star that you want. Now today we're going to be doing the 5 star Customistic Banner, let me fix that right here. And we're just going to be talking about, you know, the best units to actually pick from, and you know, some of the ones that you want to stay away from. So we have, you know, separate tiers here, we have the Meta Defining tier, you definitely want some of these units very powerful best choices. The strong tier, these units aren't as frequently seen as the meta defining units, but they're still very good. We have the cleave tier, if you're a cleaver, uh, this tier is for you. The niche tier, these have some units that are not always picked, but they can be picked as a counter pick in some situations. Needs buff tier, pretty self-explanatory, and the not available tier. Uh, these four units will not be available from the custom Mystic Banner because they're either a collaboration unit in Ainz or they released two recently in the other three. Basically, let's just talk about from the top, the meta-defining units. So these units are the best of the best. You know, we have units such as Navy Captain Landy, very strong for PvE and PvP, right? You definitely want to actually have her on your account. Um, I think as a newer player, she's the best unit you can have because you can literally build her and just use her in every single team, pretty much everywhere, and you won't see any downside. She is one of the best anchor DPSs, damage dealers in PvP right now for RTA. You can put her on your defense teams, and she's very good. Uh, you could put her in your Guild Wars defense teams and Arena defense teams, and she's going to be, be very fine. There are some counters to her, but I think overall, she's the most well-rounded unit you can have. And if you don't have her on your account, uh, you're missing out on a lot because I think she is going to be one of the best units, if not the best unit, um, just overall. Now, of course, you know, some people might say, oh, Blood Moon Haste is way better in RTA, uh, Ambitious Tywin and Death Dealer Ray way better in RTA, yes, but keep in mind we're talking about overall usability, whether it be for PvE, PvP, and just in general, right? Because, you know, RTA isn't the entirety of the game, even though I do love RTA, love me some RTA, but we're gonna talk about these units more in a general aspect. And then alongside that, we're going to talk about the other units in this list, uh, or this tier. Next we have Blood Moon Haste. So yes, Blood Moon Haste is only for PvP, but he is amazing, right? You literally bring him into any Guild Wars offense, and if any of your units die, you can just one-shot something and revive them. Very strong there. Also very good in Guild Wars um, defense as well. You see him frequently, also very good in Arena. And in World Arena, he's very powerful. Basically, if you have this unit, you are pretty much guaranteed to get Masters in RTA if you just first pick him because there's not really a lot of answers and he's just very, very strong right now. Next we have Death Dealer Ray, um, very strong debuffer, you know, also very good in Guild Wars offense, counters a lot of evasion units, very good in RTA as well. Just a very powerful unit in general. I think he is going to be one of the best units you can get because of how strong his Venom detonation is. Uh, if you're looking to actually climb in World Arena or even just regular Arena, he's a very strong pick. You can pick him with a lot of units, and he's very strong, right? He synergizes very well with Navy Captain Landy because she does a lot of AoE damage. Um, and just any Arena auto team with Death Dealer Ray makes it go a lot faster. Vicious Tywin, also very solid pick here. Very powerful for um, PvP. He has that defense break, that stun, you're right, and he's just very good in defense teams as well. Honestly, I might even put him a little bit higher, but we'll keep him here for now. I think that he's just a very strong uh, mitigation knight for PvP, and if you don't know what to pick in RTA, or you don't know what knight to bring in Arena Offense, or even Guild Wars Offense, uh, you can just pick Ambitious Tywin on Aureus. He's just very strong. I think he's probably one of the best units in the game. Honestly, I kind of want to put him like up here even, because I think like this unit just doesn't really have any counters, to be honest. Right? He's just very solid and just very powerful. Next we have Zeo. So the thing with Zeo is people want to rate him a lot higher. And yes, I agree. However, he gets countered by the new ML Luna. And a lot of times you can't really use him in World Arena because uh, cleavers will either pick him first or they'll ban him. And he's not really good unless you're picking him with cleave or against cleave, to be honest, because the meta is super tanky now. Um, so because of that, you're not going to really use him unless you're a cleaver, to be honest, or you're countering cleave. And you can use him in Guild Wars Defense and Guild Wars Offense, but um, yeah, there's just way better consistent options because he doesn't have Ignore Effect Resist. Still think he's very good, right? If you have him and you're newer to the game, you can always speed contest, which is very nice. But overall usability right now in PvP just went down, and in PvE, he's just not that great of a unit. Next we have Valian, very standard cleave counter. 
Um, she's very good against ML Luna. She is very good on defense teams for Arena, and she is just a very powerful knight overall. Um, she just takes away souls, which is insane, right? Very, very crucial part of the game, and it shuts that down, which is pretty crazy. And she's just a very solid unit. Then we also have Abyss Lufine, very strong AoE damage dealer, pairs very well with Conquerilius, who has a very strong Vigor buff and a dual attack on her S1. Um, I think both these units are very powerful for PvP. Conquerilius is strong for PvE as well, for Ancient Inheritance, and also for some Hunt one-shots, but in general, I think these units kind of fell off a bit, but they're still very good. Next, we have the Strong tier, so these units are going to be a little bit more specialized, but still pretty powerful, right? Dragon King Shroon is very good into the meta, uh, Ambitious Tywin and Death Deal Ray because of their stuns and sleeps. Urban Shadow Shu is a very good injury bruiser, very good against health scaling bruisers, and a lot of the, pretty much all these units really stack health, so very good against them. Uh, she just kind of is a little bit slow, and she kind of gets countered by barriers, so you have to keep that in mind. We have Lone Crescent Bologna, very good into Navy Captain Landy. However, she does get shut down by a lot of units such as like Last Rider Crow, Lionheart Sermia, you know, Savior Auden as well. Meter Cowric used to be very powerful, now he's just powerful, mostly because uh, his S3 is a non attack skill cleanse, and that gets countered super hard by Selene and like Politist, and he gets kind of run over by aggression because uh, he doesn't really do much to protect his team besides cleanse. So because of that, he kind of fell down the rankings, in my opinion, a little bit. Last Rider Crow, very solid knight. Not as solid as Tywin, though, because there's not as much AoE damage right now. Mostly it's single targets. Because of that, he's kind of fell down. But if you do run into Abelian, Abyss Lufine, or like Lone Crescent Bona, he still has a lot of value. Lionheart Sermia, pretty solid counter pick, I'd say. But she's very, very strong, right? She is very good into the meta Navy Captain Landy. Uh, she's okay into Abyssal Euphine, good into Conqueror Lilius, okay into Laia, are okay into Zeo, anything with extra attacks and dual attacks. Briar Witches area, very good defense breaker, good against evasion units, and stops revives, pretty nice, especially after exclusive equipment. Spectre Tenebria, very solid PvE and PvP unit, not super powerful in both, honestly, but she's just solid overall, I'd say. Martial Artist Ken kind of fell off, I think he's a little bit weak now, but I'm going to put him here for Guild Wars. He's good in Guild Wars defense and offense, so pretty good unit. And you can pick him into Navy Captain Landing, he's very good. And then Strays, you're probably wondering why he's not in the Cleave tier. Uh, yes, he's a good Cleave unit, but for hunt one-shots, he's extremely powerful. You just build him on Rage Set, and he can one-shot every single hunt. So if you want to build your one-shot hunt teams, he is good. Now, Rift is just a better option nowadays, so honestly his value probably went down, maybe he's just a cleave unit, so we'll stick him down here. Uh, but yeah, that's the strong tier, let's move on to the cleave tier. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I don't cleave, so I don't know the scenarios when to pick them. But I think out of this list, I think the most important ones to have are Requiem Rwana and also Ludwig. Requiem Rwana is very strong if you pair her with like Zeo and like Ran especially with Band Protection RTA. Also very good in Guild Wars Offense because she can reset skill cooldowns and do a ton of damage. And Eternal Ludwig is just like a nuker, right? You just stack souls with him with uh, Toggle's Ancient Book and he just one-shots everyone, so pretty strong. Next we have the niche tier here. Let's just talk about you know what they're used in very quickly. So Sage Ball is a counter cleave unit, very good against cleave with his sleep. LQC, very good against Stark units, pretty good against Death Dealer Ray and Blood Moon Haste actually. Desert Jewel Passar, very good against barrier teams, so you can pick him with uh, against Crimson Armins because they're pretty much always on protection set. Made Chloe just a solid attack buffer and a reviver. Her win rate's very high on RTA, but the thing is, um, she's very slow and you need to build like your entire team around her with effect resist. Dark Corvus, very good in Guild Wars offense, pretty much a free win if you pair him with just Soul Weavers. Design a little bit, very good against Cleavers. Uh, also very good against um, Blood Moon Luna, actually, so pretty good there. Actually, is she good? I'm trying to think. The Seal Block it? Probably not good. <laughs> Spirit Eye Selene, very good in Guild Wars Offense. Um, if you see any Dark Unit on the defense teams, you just bring her. She will just soak all the damage, revive your team, and do a ton of damage. Arvid Villager, good against Cleave and with Cleave as an anchor. Solitaria, good against units that build focus, so units such as Ocean Breeze Luka or even the newly buffed Sylvan Sage Vivian. Specimen says, very good with stun comps, Pirate Captain Flan, very good at stunning, single target, um, if you have her with the Summer Time Asteria's artifact. And Apoc Ravi is just a solid anchor pick that you want to pick with um, just units that can actually keep her alive, and honestly, 
against teams that are pretty slow because she has injuries on her S1, she can revive with her S3, and you can even pick her against Cleave. And then Archdemon Shadow, just a good seal unit that kind of got outshadowed by ML Luna. And then we have the other units down here that need a buff, Remnant Violet and Sylvan Sage. After their buffs, even though I, I really tested them a lot, they still feel kind of weak, so I think they need like an exclusive equipment or something. But besides that, that is pretty much this tier list and what you guys should focus on for the customistic banner. I think the top, you know, meta-defining tier, if you pick from this list, you should be good to go. These are probably the best units right now, and then the strong units are going to be following them. So it's really up to you what you want to pick. You know, if there's a unit here that you really like that's not meta-defining, go for it. It's your account. You know, you should just pick what you want. For example, if you really love Lone Crescent Bologna, I know she's a fan favorite, uh, you can pick her. She, I still use her a lot, actually, and she's very strong. Just not as meta-defining as these units currently, especially for PvP. But the meta always changes, and you know, your favorite unit might get buffed in the future. Pretty much it for this video though, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.